In this video, we will discuss about another type of inheritance which is shown by complementary genes. Complementary genes are the genes which are located at different loci of the same or different chromosomes, but they work together to show one type of expression or phenotype. Let us take uh, an example to understand this and the example is of Lathyrus odoratus. Lathyrus odoratus that is commonly known as sweet pea. In sweet pea, the flower colors are of two types. One is purple. So we are talking of flower color that is purple or white. Now how is this purple color formed? First let us understand this and then we will come to this uh, expression or inheritance. There is a simple reaction which we need to understand that there is a raw material or which we can call the precursor. It is converted into a chromogen which is white and this chromogen gets converted into anthocyanin, which is purple color. Now, this reaction is raw material to anthocyanin and here we need two enzymes. One enzyme and another enzyme. The enzyme 1 is synthesized by a gene called C and enzyme 2 is synthesized by a gene called P. That means unless and until these two genes are present in their dominant form, enzymes will not be synthesized. And we are talking about the genes which are located on different loci. That means if we say this is one chromosome and here is the gene C, the other gene P could be on the same chromosome at different locus or it could be another situation like this. C is here and another chromosome has P at some other place. But the condition required for purple color formation is that C should also be in its dominant form and P should also be in its dominant form. Anyone, if not present in its dominant form, that enzyme will not be synthesized. So if we take a situation, say there is capital C that is dominant, one recessive, capital P and a recessive P. That means this gene is also dominant and this gene is also dominant. That means both the enzymes will be synthesized and the color will be purple. If we take a situation, both the C's are dominant, but the P's are recessive. That means this enzyme will be synthesized due to presence of a dominant C, but P is recessive, so this, uh, this enzyme will not be synthesized. That means in this, in this situation, the flower color will be white because as this enzyme is not produced, the chromogen, which is white, is not converted into purple colored anthocyanin. Another situation, C is recessive and P's are dominant. That means this enzyme is not synthesized. The enzyme synthesized by gene P is present. But if enzyme 1 is not there, the raw material will not get converted into chromogen. And this enzyme 2 is responsible for conversion of chromogen into purple colored pigment. So either C or P, if not present, purple color formation will not take place. Or in other words, these two genes work complementary to each other and that is how this one phenotype is expressed. After we understand this, let us talk about the inheritance, how exactly the ratio is. We will start with the typical Mendelian pure line. So if we say that we are starting with the parent generation which is 
purple colored flower C, C and P, P. Homozygous dominant for both. So this would be purple as C is also dominant, P is also dominant. That means that both the enzymes will be synthesized. Crossed with recessive for both. As both the genes are not there, both enzymes will not be produced and the color will be white of the flower. We are starting with this. In F1, this plant will produce gametes containing capital C and capital P, all four types. And here it will be small p and small c, that is recessive. So in F1, if we plot the punit square, we are doing just a short part of it. Say the cp comes here and the lowercase comes here. That means the offsprings will get one dominant C from one plant and one recessive, one dominant P and other recessive P. That means the color will be purple. Here it is showing the law of dominance which says starting with pure line in F1 the character which is expressed is the dominant character. But we want to go to F2. So here we can simply write that in F1 all 16 offsprings will be heterozygous for both the genes and they would be purple because of presence of dominant genes which synthesize the enzymes. Both the enzymes are synthesized. If F1 members are selved, then we want to see the F2 ratio. This is what we want to study. So let us talk about F2 from selfing of F1. We are selfing heterozygous of F1 to obtain F2. The gametes which are produced would be capital C with capital P, capital C with lowercase p, small c that is recessive with a dominant p and both the genes are in their recessive allelic form. So now let us, and both the parents would produce the same type of gametes. So let us talk about this punit square where we would get 16 offsprings, capital C, P, capital C, lowercase p, lowercase c, capital P, and all recessive. Same here lowercase capital and all of this type. Now let us fill this unit square. This will get both capital C's and capital P's. We need to be very very careful when we are writing C's because in case of P and all it is easy to differentiate between a dominant and a recessive, a capital and a lowercase. But in C, whether it is dominant or recessive we simply write C. Only size is different. So here also capital C, capital C, capital P is lowercase, capital small P and lowercase, here capital C, small c, capital P and lowercase. In this case C's are capital, one dominant P, one recessive, C and C, lowercase P is capital C, small c, capital P, lowercase P, capital C and C and both the P's are recessive. In this case, both the P's are dominant, one C capital, lowercase, one P and lowercase. Here, both the C's are small, both the P's are dominant, both the C's are small, one P capital, other P lowercase. In this situation, capital, lowercase, P and P. Here, C, C and both the P's are small. Both the C's are small, 1P capital, lowercase, and in this case, every allele is in its recessive. Now, let us see what is going to be the color of these flowers. We said we need one capital C at least and one capital P in order to get the purple color. The reaction was from the raw material to anthocyanin, we needed two enzymes. One is synthesized by capital or dominant C and other is synthesized by P. So the phenotype or wherever 
or rather genotype, wherever we have one capital C and one capital P will give us purple flower. So here this will be purple, this C and P capital, so purple, this will also be purple, this will also be purple. Here capital and P is also capital, so purple. This C is capital, that means it will produce one enzyme, but P's are recessive, so no other enzyme is produced. This is going to be white. Let us write W for it. This is the white one. Here, capital C, capital P, so this will be purple. Capital C is there, but P is recessive, so this will be white. This purple. This one also purple. One capital C, one capital P. Here, C is a recessive, P is dominant. That means the second enzyme will be produced, but not the first. So this will also only white. Here also the same situation. This will also be white. This will be purple. Because one capital C, one capital P. Here C is capital, but P is not. So white. Here also C recessive. And in this case, both the genes are in their recessive form. So this will also be white. Now let us count how many purple do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So we have, and we are talking of the phenotype ratio. We have nine as purple and how many white let us count the whites this is one two three four five six and seven so we have seven white this is actually a modified ratio of the typical nine is to three is to three is to one ratio in that we get in a dihybrid cross F2, that is second generation. These nine, they show both the dominant genes. Three show one dominant. These other three show the other dominant. And here, all four are recessive. In this case, these last ones have combined. And the ratio is nine is to seven. That means the ratio that we get in complementary genes is 9 is to 7, which is a modified ratio of the typical dihybrid cross. That is 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. So, the process in which or the method in which it works is two genes are required. They, these genes can be present on uh, different loci of the same chromosome or of different chromosomes. Both these genes are responsible for formation of enzymes. And for this reaction, that means purple color formation in the flowers of Lathyrus odoratus, both enzymes are required. One synthesized by C gene, other synthesized by P gene. So, in whichever situation we get at least one C dominant and one P dominant, both enzymes are synthesized and purple colored pigment anthocyanin is formed. So, the flowers are purple. In remaining seven situations, either one gene is not there or both the genes are not here. So enzymes are not produced properly and the color of the flower is white. Ratio is 9 is to 7 which is a modified ratio of the typical Mendelian dihybrid cross. This is complementary genes and the example is Lathyrus odoratus that is our sweet.